In this tutorial video, we're going to look at completing the levels um, before we move on to the scoring system. So this is just a tidy up session um, where uh, we can complete the remaining uh, two levels, uh, two level designs, um, and we're also going to look at um, using child objects. Now uh, well, these are really really handy um, and uh, they're quite straightforward. Um, so we're going to use child objects to draw some extra enemies on the screen. So um, I'm just going to load up my first room. Okay, this is my first room that I've created. So um, what I'm going to do is to draw in my second level. So I've already drawn my second level, so I'm going to show you that on the screen. Okay, so this is my second level. So it's more complex than the first level. Okay. Um, and I am going to add in some extra monsters into this level um, a little bit later on. But what I wanted to show you first is, is um, one of the tools that enables us to, um, to make sure that our levels are consistent. So if I go back to my first room, you can see that I've got a space here for my scoring system. Now, it's difficult, it would be difficult to line this up um, on my second level um, without using these tools. And they're the ruler tools. So if I just highlights or if I just click on the ruler here you can see that my my cursor changes to um, a up and down arrow with a line through it okay and as I drag down it allows me to um, drag down the ruler on the screen so the same thing with the uh, with this axis with the x-axis I can drag the ruler across now I've got a meeting point there now where um, my um, walls meet Okay, so I can use these figures to draw my ruler on my new room. So uh, I'm looking here, and this is about, this is like 750, um, and then that next um, marker across, so 750 and the next marker across. So if I started a new room, for example, don't know about that. If I start a new room, create room. So if I go back to my first room, 750, oh hang on, let's make sure that the room's the same size, because it's not, 1920 by 1080. Okay, let's zoom out so I can see the whole room. There we go, 1920 by 1080. So my first level then is 750 plus the one. Okay, so I'm gonna go back onto here, I'm gonna click here, I'm going to go 750 plus the oh, plus the one. So that's the where my walls uh, start on the x-axis, and on the y-axis, it's um, 100 and just just coming up to the second um, second line there. So I'm just going to come down to 100. And that's where that one is there. I know I can start putting my wall tiles in, um, or my floor tiles, I should say, sorry, um, into my game. So I know that my first tile is going to be there, okay? And my second, uh, so I can draw my, um, just check that, yeah. Okay, and then I can um, start drawing in my uh, the rest of my room. So I can um, hold on the Alt key, I can draw my tile in there. Alt key, I can draw my tile in um, there. I think it's there. Just double check. Yes, it is. Not there. There and there. And now I can draw my border around the outside of my room as I normally would. So that allows me then to have the same gap. Okay, on each level. Okay, the same blank space on each level. So uh, it's a really, really handy tool to help you lay it out. So what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to pause the video uh, in a second, and what I'm going to ask you to do is to complete uh, your second level and your third level. Don't forget you need to keep the same naming conventions. So this room here, um, I'm going to rename, and I'm going to call it RM underscore level three. Okay, and then I've got my three levels drawn, and you can drag your objects in and put them where you like. 
Um, we are going to be looking at adding some extra monsters in uh, after we come back um, after the pause. So um, complete the next two levels of your route of your game, and I'll see you back uh, in a little while. So I've now created my three levels. Um, to remove the ruler guides, it's a straightforward process. You just hover over the ruler guide, as like uh, you see on the screen, click and drag back to the ruler, and it removes the ruler guides. So let's have a look at what I've done here then. So we've got level one, which you've seen before, that's quite straightforward. We have level two, which is slightly more complex, and I'm gonna put some more monsters in here in a minute. And then we've got uh, level three, which is the most complex maze. Um, you'll notice that there are two keys, so I need to get uh, this key in order to open this lock, and then this key to, in order to open up that lock. Um, so how you design your levels is up to you. You haven't got to have two keys. I've just decided I was going to have two keys. And again, we're going to put some more monsters in here to make this slightly more difficult. Um, also, um, you can change the levels, uh, the way that the, the rooms are ordered. So if, um, for example, you uh, wanted to use level two as level one, and that was going to be your first level, if you click on the, um, the house, Okay, you can see you can change the the room order. Um, we'll be looking at this in a little bit more detail a little bit later on uh, because we uh, when we do the welcome screen, that's going to be the first screen that uh, this displayed. Um, also, you'll notice that in game there is a hat. Okay, I've created a sprite for a hat, so the hat sprite is there. Okay, and I've also created an object based on that that sprite. Um, and the reason for that is the end goal, the, uh, the, uh, the end game, is to collect the hat. I mean, the game's called Yo, Where's My Hat? So um, you need to find the hat in order to finish the game. Once you get the hat, that's the win, okay? So um, what we're going to look at now is um, creating some monsters that um, have um, child, um, a parent and child effect. So what that means is, We've got a monster that we've created that has code associated with it. So if I open up the, the monster object, so you can see the monster object there, we've got code associated with this, this, of this object. We've got a create event, which, um, um, if I can move that out of the way, the create event, which um, it sets the random direction, and we've got what happens when it collides with the wall. Okay, so what we're gonna look at now is um, how we can use the parent um, option here in order um, for other monsters to take on um, the code of this monster as a parent and they're going to be the, ch the, the children of that, of that object. It sounds complicated, but it's really not when you see it in action. So I'm just going to tidy up a little bit of this um, just so as uh, we, can, um, we can get going on this. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to um, create two extra uh, monsters. I'm going to have a red monster and a blue monster. Um, and what they're going to do, the, um, the the blue monster is going to move horizontally and the red monster is going to move vertically. So whereas the white monster can move in any of the four directions, um, the, the blue one's going to move horizontally, um, either left or right, and then the red monster is going to move vertically either up or down. So once I've created the objects, um, or at least once I've created the sprites for those, uh, those objects, uh, or what you've created for the sprites for the objects. If you uh, will come back to the to the uh, to the video, so I'll pause it here so you can create your sprites. Okay, so on screen you can see that I've opened up my uh, original monster object, and I've also created a monster object for my uh, H monster, which is my horizontal monster, and my V monster, which is my vertical monster. But you'll also notice there are no coding events in these at all. So if I was to put one of these in my game, um, nothing would happen. So I'll just show, I'll just show you that is the case. So if I go into level one and I drag in the H monster, that should move horizontally. So let's put it there, okay? So when I run the game, okay, up it comes, and you can see that there's nothing happening with this H monster at all, whereas the, uh, the original monster is moving. Okay, so what we're gonna do is something called, um, we're going to give it inheritance. So it, this, these two monsters, the H monster and the V monster, are going to inherit the code from these, which means it's going to have the same code as the V monster, as the uh, main monster. So we don't have to code things, and we can change individual elements, and that's what we're going to do. 
Okay, so it's a very straightforward process. Okay, so all I'm going to do on the original monster, the one you want to be the parent, you can see there's a parent option here. You just click the little icon to the side. So I'm looking here. Click the, the object to the side, and it asks me which are the children of this object. So we're going to have the H monster and the V monster as children. So we're going to go objects. So I'm going to have H monster, and I'm going to also add objects v monster so i've got this uh, object now it has two children h monster and v monster now remember there was no code in the h monster and v monster and you can see now that it's put in the code that matches it's exactly the same as the code from here okay so if i open up this create option here you can see the code for that and if i open up the code for this this one here you can see that it matches it exactly okay it's exactly the same all right so we're going to do some work with this now. We are going to um, change the way that these are coded. So I want the collisions to the, with the wall to be the same, because obviously as the uh, the object or the monster hits the wall, regardless of it's going horizontally or vertically, we want it to change direction. So the code for that currently says it's going to change 180 degrees. So if it hits the wall coming down, it's going to go up. If it hits the wall going left or right, it's going to go left, okay? And vice versa. So. Uh, Let's um, close down this code window. Actually, no, I'm not going to close down that code window because uh, when I recode, I can copy and paste bits of my code. So I want to use this code, okay, in my other monster. Um, I always want to adapt the code in my in my other monster, but I don't want to be retyping it because it's a waste of my time. So if I copy it, Control and C to copy it, okay, and then I'm going to come down here. Oh, I did that last time. I'm going to move this across and close down the code for this monster. And I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this OBJ monster, okay, there. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to, I've got three options. I can either open the parent event, well, that's just opening up the parent uh, coding window. I can choose to inherit the event, which is keep it the same as the other, as the parent. Or I can override this particular event. And that's what I want to do. I want to override this event and what will happen it'll open up a new code window with no code in it. So what I'm going to do is to highlight the code in this window. I'm going to paste in the code that I copied from the parent event. Now remember this uh, monster is going to uh, move across the screen horizontally. So horizontal directions are 0 and 180. So I'm going to get rid of the 90 from here and I'm going to get rid of the 270. 70 okay so I can close this down so now when I move over to this window you can see that I got one that's grayed out which is the one that's inherited from the um, from the parent object which is the one here okay um, that's the OBJ wall one and um, the uh, the one I've just created now is white which means that that one is not inherited it's it's um, uh, a different piece of code okay so I'm going to do the same thing on the vertical monster one. So you can see that I've got the same um, setup here where I've got two that are grayed out. So I'm going to right click on there. I'm going to override the event. Again, I'm going to paste in my values and my code. Um, again, here, I'm going to um, make sure that I change, let me just move that over a bit. I'm going to change this. I didn't change this in the last one. I'm going to go and change it now. This is a random um, vertical helps always spell it correctly, doesn't it? Vertical movement and speed, and obviously the one above it is going to be horizontal. So the vertical. Uh, uh, movements here are going to be the 90 and the 270 so I'm going to get rid of the 180 and the 0 okay um, let's go back up and change uh, this other one up the top move this over into the create there random horizontal movement horizontal movement Okay, let's see if those work then. Let's go into um, our room and let's, um, as a matter of fact, let's go, let's play the game because we already set up the, the blue monster in the game. 
Yeah, and now you can see that that blue monster has automatically um, been allocated a movement. So if I come up to the monster, because it's inherited the um, the previous uh, the parent, you can see as it collides with the wall, it goes back. Okay, so let's just double check to make sure that this and that that's also works. So it's when I collide with the monster, um, my player disappears back to the start. Okay, so let's just look at one other thing, and that let me zoom out a little bit, um, and that is going to be um, what, what happens. Let's close down these cold windows, um, just so we can we can see more clearly. What happens if I add something to the parent object then? Um, well, what should happen is it will automatically add the same um, objects to the horizontal and the vertical monster. Okay, so let's give that a go. I'm just going to add something that's not going to do anything in game. I'm just going to add something to um, like a collision event with the lock, for example, because we haven't got that listed in here. So we're going to add, it's not going to stay, I'm just using it to demonstrate. So I'm going to add an event. Um, let's say we're going to have a, a collision event, objects, and let's say if we collide with the lock. Okay, so I've added that to the um, obj monster which is the parent so what should happen now is that obj this one here this obj lock uh, event should be added to the horizontal and the vertical monster automatically and you can see that here it's been added to the horizontal monster and here it's been added to the vertical monster okay so it's a very powerful tool uh, stops us uh, or reduces the amount of code that we need to do i'm going to get rid of that because i don't need it i'm going to delete that event and that also, also that's then be deleted from the from the other ones other monsters as well so um, um, what I'm going to ask you to do now is to uh, to populate your your levels with um, th uh, four dimensional movement monster like the the white one um, a vertical monster red and a blue monster horizontal you can put as many as you like in your levels obviously the the, the higher the level the harder the uh, the game should be um, and then next time uh, in the next tutorial video, we're going to be looking at um, creating fonts and um, the scoring and live system. So I'll see you in the next lesson.